Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In this video, we'll be discussing what is the one month strategy for the upcoming FMG exam that is to happen in June 2023. Now, uh, the official date for the FMG exam has not have not been released, but this is an overview uh, of the one month strategy because in my opinion, the exam is likely to schedule in mid June or towards the end of June because till now there has been no notification. So at least one month to 40 days uh, the NBE will give for the upcoming exam. Just a brief overview of the FMG exam in general. I think all of you know about this. But yes, as you all know, the exam is in online mode with English only medium. So there are 300 MCQs, right? In two parts, part A and part B, consisting of 150 questions each. And for each part, you are given two and a half hours, right? So this is the whole overview and very, very important thing that there is no negative marking. So you have to attempt all the 300 questions, even if you don't know the answer, right? So at the outset, what are the general principles for this one month strategy? I'll really uh, suggest you to make a timetable, divide all the 19 subjects, which are the important ones, which are not important, so important, and assign each number of days to each subject. Making a timetable at this point will help you not focus a lot on a particular subject you move on to the next when that period of time for a particular subject is over the second important point i really uh, like to tell you is to make pyq your guide light so make pyq your guide light your preparation should be guided by pyqs so you can do pyq from any source be it alan next app be it any other app or even fmg solutions is a very good book for doing previous question okay fmg solution so you can do previous questions you should do and those should be a guide light to what you should actually read for the upcoming exam so what whichever the topics that are there in the previous questions make a list subject wise of each subject that these are the previous topics which have been asked and you should read those topics in detail from your notes right so that is how you should approach uh, any exam in general so Group study again helps a lot of students even uh, when I was preparing for my PG entrance me and Aditya used to discuss a lot of stuff together and he used to teach me uh, for example hematology he was really good in hematology I was good in ECG so I, so I used to teach him ECG so that's how uh, our study became easier so if you have a study partner first you get motivated to study and second he teaches you a lot of stuff which uh, which reduces your time for studying. So, and the fourth important thing that I'll really uh, request you guys to maintain a proper lifestyle right now. Okay, so eat good food, sleep at least six to seven hours because now the exams are nearing. So, in my opinion, you should get some good sleep. I'll give you a schedule that even if you study for 10 hours per day, a good 10 hour study per day, still you can uh, have a good sleep and still you can have time for yourself uh, for whatever you want. So, uh, do take six to seven hours of sleep eat good food and take adequate amount of water so you don't want to fall sick at this point because those sick days are uh, days lost and so be healthy right now and another fifth important point i would like to say that since the exam is in morning shift right so between nine to four between nine to four all this time so during this time in this last one month you should be very attentive so study, make your study schedule in such a way that you are doing previous year questions and your study time between 9 to 4. So 9 to 4, you should not sleep. 9 to 4, you should not waste your time, right? Now, uh, what are the uh, various important subjects? So this is again from their official website. Pre and paraclinical subjects are covered in part A. And among them, the first professional subjects, anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry, they are very, very important. They are around 17 questions which will be asked from these subjects. And again, forensic, pharma, micro, super important. So forensic, I, in my opinion, is a very, very important subject for FMG because 13 questions are asked. 13 questions is a big number. And the amount of material that you have to study for FMT is very less as compared to all these first and second year subjects, right? So do give FMT a very important time in your schedule. Don't neglect it. I know it is a lot of ratification. You have to do a lot of memorizing. But the amount of uh, effort to outcome ratio is very, very favorable in forensic. Now, pathology, I haven't star marked because for FMG, there are 13 questions only. And pathology is a big subject, right? Pathology is a big subject. So, whichever units in pathology are important, you should do your previous questions. 
get to know which units are important and focus only on those units in pathology because pathology is a big subject. Now coming on to clinical subjects, unlike NEAT PG and INICT, in FMG, medicine surgery carry a lot, lot weightage. So around 33 questions will be asked from uh, medicine and uh, general surgery. So don't neglect them. And unlike NEAT PG and INI, minus carry a lot less weightage in FMG. So around five questions each from uh, psyche, derma, uh, psyche derma, ortho and anesthesia. Now radiology for FMG, although saying five uh, questions, but radiotherapy again has five questions. So radiology in my opinion is also little important because again the effort to outcome ratio in radiology is very less. Now uh, pediatrics, ophthal, so ophthal is very important for FMG. Pediatrics, ophthal, obsgyny, PSM. These are very, very important subjects. So in general, what are the high yield subjects? Namely four very high yield subjects, more than 30 questions, medicine, surgery, obsgyny and PSM. Okay. In my opinion, obsgyny in this, in amongst these four, take the lead because again, the effort to outcome ratio is very favorable in obs and gyny. Now, moderately yielding subjects with more than uh, 10 questions, uh, again, anat, physio, biochem, uh, pharma, path, micro, FMT, uh, ophthalmic radio, and pediatrics. These are uh, moderately yielding subjects. You should spend time in this. And which are the low yield subjects? If you don't have time, you can skip them. So, minors, psyche, derma, anesthesia, ortho, right? So, how to prepare if you know this information? You know which are the important subjects, which are the uh, less important subjects. So, there will be three scenarios, three sets of students. Number one, those who have studied, those who have, those who have watched all the videos uh, and done their notes. Second, I think majority of students will fall in the second category who have done some subjects from some notes, uh, some subjects ke videos, some subjects ke notes they have done. And the third category will be who haven't started their preparation, who have uh, what, who haven't seen any videos or who haven't read any review books or done any notes. So for, uh, for the first category of students who have their set of notes ready, so your majority of work is done. Now you just have to revise your entire syllabus. So again, when you are revising, focus on the subjects right now, since it is still 40 days left, uh, try to read those which uh, those subjects which are weak right now so that you can make them stronger and uh, do only notes. Okay, at this point, there is no need to watch any videos. If even if you haven't seen any videos of a particular uh, subject or a particular chapter, but you have read the notes, just focus on the notes. If you're not able to understand any topic, then only watch the videos, right? Then only watch the videos. And among the videos, the revision videos again should be watched and not the main videos, right? At this point, saving time is more important. Doing high yield studying is much more important. Do all the previous year questions on all the previous year topics. So PYTs should be at the tip, okay? So 50 or 50 to 60% of the paper will be from previous year questions don't get them wrong these are easy questions okay these are easy marks that you can get right uh, when to give gt should you give gt so personally i am not a big fan of gts because uh, see all the platforms that are there they the gts are not really representative of the exam and uh, very close to the actual exam if you give gts i don't think it really serves any purpose because even if you get a very good score in a gt uh, it does not reflect that you'll get a good score in the main exam. So in my opinion, the frequency of GT should be once per week. Okay, so once per week, give GT, get the hang, get the hang uh, of the pattern of questions that is asked and leave it at that, right? Now, how you should definitely do MCQs at this point of time, pre uh, predominantly previous questions, around 100 to 150 questions per day and stick to your schedule. So for example, if you have allocated four days to surgery, so even if you're not able to complete surgery in these four days, go to the next subject. So it's uh, it's uh, wiser to cover the breadth of the syllabus rather than going into depth of each subject. Okay. And at this point, when you are revising your entire syllabus, you have still one month left. Uh, mark important topics. So mark important pages, fold those important pages or take screenshots of them. So I know one of my juniors had made uh, WhatsApp groups of all the 19 subjects and those important tables, those important flow charts, which were asked in the previous uh, exam or important images, he just used to click those and put it in the group, click those and put it in the group for all the 19 subjects. 
so his uh, last 10th revision material was already ready that way so at this point of time it is a very good idea to cut short uh, make good notebook of this is the syllabus this is the topic this is the material that i am going to read in the last 10 days and uh, you uh, i think all of you who follow me already know that i am a very big fan of the last 10 day revision uh, it has helped me a lot in my entire uh, medical journey and revising everything in the last 10 days will definitely definitely improve your rank now the second set of students who have done some subjects uh, from here some subjects from there did some notes not uh, haven't read the entire syllabus start with those subjects uh, which you haven't done till now so for that you can give around 10 days 10 days at this point okay so whichever subjects you haven't done do them right now do them from the notes first, read the notes. If you are not able to understand any topic from those notes, then go to the revision of the main videos. After that, do the moderately yielding subjects, moderately yielding subjects. So there are 10 of these subjects, give two days each. So 20 days for the moderately yielding subjects. And then in the last, just before the exam, do the high yielding subjects. So revise the major subjects. There were four PSM, Obscany, Medicine, Surgery three days each so last 12 days for the very high yielding subjects and finally those students will come will talk about who haven't yet started their preparation so please don't lose lose hope that uh, okay this attempt uh, i won't study i will just chill and party i'll study from july okay so don't do that mistake right now at least do previous questions so if you don't want to read any subject you you're thinking that it induces anxiety in me just do last 10 year previous year questions of all subjects okay last 10 year previous year questions all subjects and whichever subjects you think you like so for example you were good in some subjects in uh, mbbs for example my favorite subjects were anatomy and surgery and for i loved reading those two subjects so whichever your whichever your subjects you like uh, study those subjects at least from the revision videos or revision notes so that you get some uh, you get some questions correct in this exam and give this exam not just for the aim of clearing it but just to know the pattern just to get the feel of the exam how the exam questions are asked what is the exam pattern and this will really prepare you for the upcoming december attempt okay so don't waste this attempt even if you haven't yet started your preparation that's what i tell my juniors as well that it's okay you haven't uh, studied for whatever you reason that might be but you should still give the exam you get to know a lot of things from that so in general some important points for uh, the upcoming fmg whenever you wake up start the day with previous questions so usually there is a lag between waking up and sitting to study okay so during this time in my opinion the best way to reduce this time lag is to just scroll on your phone the previous year questions so you have various apps all apps have previous year questions just do previous year questions when you wake up it will reduce your time lag to, to initiate studying and also you should know previous year questions in general for the upcoming exam and so for the initial two to three hours of the day just do previous year questions followed by revising your notes of that subject from your primary source so in the next seven to eight hours revise your notes and then just before finishing your day, you are about to sleep, you are lying in the bed, again do previous questions, okay, of that same subject. So you started with PYQs, know what, what lacuna you had, you did your notes, and then at the end of the day, you again do PYQs. And whenever you are studying, uh, I've said this earlier also in the video, coincide your study time with the actual exam time. So part A is from 9 to 11.30 and part B is from 2 to 4.30 right so coincide your uh, studying uh, schedule according to the main exam and uh, if you follow this uh, routine you will still have around six to seven hours to sleep and around seven to eight hours to do the rest of your work so for example eating food going to the toilet scrolling on insta scrolling on twitter having a chat okay watching some video you'll still have around seven to eight hours to do that okay so if you study at least 10 hours a day also, that is more than sufficient for you. Okay. And finally, in my opinion, FMG is one exam that if you study, you will crack it as simple as that. Okay. FMG is not a very tough exam. Uh, you just need to know the basic of each subject, but all important subjects you have to cover. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, it from my side. Thank you and all the best.